Hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to a very special AWS This Week where we have our final countdown to reInvent 2021 and the absolute mountain of announcements of the last week which we know as pre-invent. This week we'll be covering AWS releases their new Elastic Disaster Recovery Service Amplify receives a small avalanche of updates Graviton 2 support extends to more services Amazon Linux 2022 has been released for preview Plus our tips ahead of the final countdown to reInvent 2021 I'm Stephen Sennett, here to bring you another episode of AWS This Week. AWS has released a new service called AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. This service aims to minimize the downtime for services running either on-premise or other cloud providers by providing an automatic disaster recovery into AWS. Now, if this feels familiar, you'd be right with AWS having built the server on the foundation of Cloud Endure Disaster Recovery, which they acquired back in 2019. In fact, they both cost the same amount per protected server and seem to be functionally very similar. Elastic Disaster Recovery doesn't yet support all the same operating systems or AWS regions as Cloud Endure, but it does natively integrate into the AWS console, CloudTrail, IAM, and CloudWatch. Perhaps this is part of the future AWS intends for Cloud Endure DR, but for now, it also remains fully available. Okay, this is actually a bunch of updates with AWS Amplify receiving nearly half a dozen or so worth mentioning in the last week. We can't do them justice here, but just to wrap through the list, you can now export Amplify backends into a CDK stack, which lets you embed them into your existing CDK pipelines, potentially making it far more compatible with your existing DevOps practices. As of a few weeks ago, it's also worth mentioning that you can now add almost any other AWS resource to your Amplify backend as well, further simplifying your deployment architecture. The GraphQL Transformer has also been completely overhauled for far more flexibility. The new authenticator for popular JavaScript frameworks comes with not just a new theme, but added capabilities for social sign-in, more extensibility, and generally giving you more control over your login experience. And lastly, there's a developer preview for enabling Pinpoint to be better integrated with Amplify for in-app messaging. Needless to say, there's a huge amount of changes, so be sure to check out the links in the description to get all the details. Continuing to amp up their investment in Graviton2, AWS have announced support for a bunch of new services to leverage these CPUs specifically designed for workloads with the needs of the public cloud. Elasticash can now run on burstable T4G instances, while Neptune has included support both for the T4Gs and also the latest generation R6G instances. But the most interesting one has to be that Fargate now supports containers powered by Graviton2. Fargate gives us an ability to run containers without managing the underlying servers. In essence, a serverless container platform. So much like Lambda, you only need to pay for the time and resources you actually consume. Also much like Lambda, which had Graviton2 support announced earlier this year, much has been made of the potential price performance improvements for your solutions of up to 40%. Graviton2 is a really interesting technology. And if you want to know more about how it can change your business, check out the Graviton challenge from AWS, which we'll include in the link in the description below. AWS have released a new version of Amazon Linux, with Amazon Linux 2022 being released to public preview. They've announced the plan to release a new major version of Amazon Linux every two years, with five years long-term support, giving more certainty and stability. That said, Amazon Linux 2 will continue to remain supported in receiving upgrades into mid-2023, with a new release also announced to update its kernel to Linux version 5.10. That's some of the most important news from the last week, but of course we still need to talk about reInvent itself. If you're going to be attending, whether virtually or in person, check out our ultimate guide to reInvent by AWS community hero Mark Nunnikoven on the ACloud Guru blog in the links below. We'll also be there at the event, including Ryan Krunenberg and Faye Ellis, who are going to be around our booth, number 1561, and on hand to wrap up the biggest announcements of the event with a very special episode of AWS this week. Swing by and tell them Stephen sent you to say hi. If you're enjoying our content, consider checking out our free plan on our website, which includes access to rotating content so you'll get something new every month. That's it for this week. So until our very special episode next week, go forth and learn all the things. And as always, keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.